So, the small but powerful ideas work for one. Many are based on teachings from leaders in mindful psychology. Choose the ones that resonate most with you. Less said more time. This is the own personal motto. Saying less and letting more time pass when we are dealing with a difficult reactive person is almost always a smart move. It allows us to simmer down, let things go and take the high road. With time, the thing we are annoyed about often just falls away. Next, let us just wait and see what happens next. We sometimes feel the need to respond and react to difficult people or situations right away, which is why we stew over what to say or do next. Third, move away from the blame game. Picking apart past events and trying to assign blame, including blaming yourself, is rarely productive. Bad things are and misunderstandings most often happen through a series of events like a domino effect. No one person is entirely to blame for the end result. So first this happened and then what happened, then that happened and that is how what happened happened. Try not to fall into other visible state of minds. Deal with your biggest problem first. That suggests that no matter what has happened, the biggest problem we face is our own anger. Our anger creates a cloud of emotion that keeps us from responding in a cogent, productive way. In that sense, our anger really is our biggest problem. Deal with yourself, meditate, exercise, take a long walk, say less and give it more time or whatever it takes before you deal with anyone else. When you are angry, it wrinkles the mind. So, you can't think clearly or be creative or thoughtful about how best to handle any situation when you are mad. So, anger wrinkles the mind and if you want to think clearly, you can't be mad at anything. Don't try to figure out or figure others out. This is another teaching and ask for yourself. If others try to figure out what you are thinking or what your motivations are, how right do you think they would be? They probably would not have a clue as to what is really going through your mind. So, why try to figure out what others are thinking? Chances are extremely good that you would be wrong, which means all that ruminating was a colossal waste of time. Your thoughts are not facts. Don't treat them as if they are. Don't believe everything you think. We experience our emotions, anxiety, tension, fear and stress keenly in our bodies. Our emotions are physical. We often take this as a sign that our thoughts must be fact. How could we feel so bad if our feelings were not true? When we are emotionally hijacked by worry, regret, fear, anxiety or anger, we must remember that the emotional and physical state we experience is real but not true. How can you grow away from this? So, psychologists suggest that when we are locked in anger, taking offense over something said or done, making judgments or fuming over how we were treated, we add to our own reservoir of suffering and even plus our reaction is equal to suffering. When we are able to be present with our feelings and inquire why we are experiencing such a strong reaction and what our feelings tell us about ourselves, that is a learning opportunity. And even plus inquiry plus presence is equal to growth. So, center your thoughts on growth green, not red. Don't ever put anyone out of your heart, not even you. And next is, you are not a time magician. When we churn over past events, we often search for how we might have done things differently to prevent is as much in the past as what happened a thousand or more years ago. So, we can't change what took place back then and we can't change what happened a week ago. Forgive for your sake, the psychologist is teaching, it is not necessary to be loyal to your suffering. We are so loyal to our suffering and focusing on the trauma of what happened to me, yes, if it happened, yes, it was horrible. But is that what defines you? Forgiveness is not something we do just for the other person. We forgive so that we can live free of the acute suffering that comes with holding on to the past. So, occupy a different mind space. Mindful based stress reduction teacher and psychologist says, meditation accompanied by powerful imaginary and studies show that imagery helps us to stop inflamed stressful thoughts. Watch all over your thoughts pass by you. Imagine that you are the deep calm blue sea. Always relax when you hear this. Send them loving kindness. Intuitive suggests that 
when you can't stop thinking about someone who is hurting you or who is driving you crazy, imagine yourself sending them a beautiful ball or of white light. Place them in that ball of light, surround them with it, holding that white light around them until your anger fades. Take a 90 second time out to free your mind. You first have to break your thought pattern. After 90 seconds, an emotion will arise and fall like a wave on the shore. It only takes 90 seconds to shift out of a mood state including anger. Give yourself 90 seconds, about 15 deep and our breaths to not think about that person or situation. You have broken that thought cycle and the hold your thoughts had on you. So that will feel good. So next is never expect gratitude. So when we do something good or nice for someone, it is our belief that we should always receive a thank you but never expect it. Although it can be extremely disheartening to do something good for someone else and not receive thanks or even acknowledgement, acts of kindness ought to be done because we want to be kind, not because we want to be thanked. That also said, that said, so we also believe firmly that whenever others do something good or nice to us, then it is our duty to say thank you and acknowledge the action or deed. We should always strive to make it true that a simple act of caring creates an endless ripple. So, next to be find yourself and be yourself. If you are not comfortable with who you are, you will inevitably end up trying to be someone else. Self-discovery is an ongoing process. If you have not find yourself, keep trying. Find out what makes you come alive and pursue it. Remember, being weird is not necessarily better than being normal. All people are weird in their own ways, even if they do conform to society's rule. Don't just be better, stay different. There is nothing more addictive or incredible in life than reinventing yourself and allow yourself to be different every day. Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. There is nothing wrong with being better, but you are different. Accept the fact there is no one else like you. You are one in a billion. No two people are the same. And that is a good thing. Every unique person adds to the our world. Unless you do nothing, but you have a choice. Choose yourself, embrace who you are and share yourself within the rest of us. Make no mistake. The world is waiting for you, waiting for you to stop asking for permission. To stop questioning yourself, waiting to hear what you have to say. You are the only one who push yourself that further to share who you are even when you are not perfect. Embrace being different. You are incredibly, absolutely, extremely, supremely, unbelievably different. Your weirdness is the source of your character and creative powers. Weird is who we are, the best parts, not perfect, not trying, just yourself. Here is one of the favorite quotes of all time, a quote from advertisement narrated by Steve Jobs. Here is to be crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in these square holes, the ones who think differently. They are not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward and while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Forget your weakness for now. That which does not kill us makes us stronger. That is a good statement by Frederick Nietzsche. In a study uh, in Harvard Review, it was noted that while people remember criticism, awareness of faults don't or doesn't necessarily translate into better performance. Chances are you paying too much attention to negative information. Millions of people are worried and always thinking about how to get rid of their weaknesses. What if you turn things around and focus on your strengths instead? The bitter truth is 
you may never overcome your weakness but you could make significant changes to how you live and work if you focus on what you are good at the key here is that you don't have to change you have to become more of who you are instead of worrying about what you are not good at and trying everything you can to be good at it why not play to your strengths you can't be good at everything actually you could but you cannot be great at anything you don't want that you can be amazing at one thing your core competence can make all the difference in your life follow your curiosity find out what makes you come alive and create yourself in the process focus your energy on exploring the one thing that brings you the most satisfaction in life and if you can make it your career you don't have to choose between doing what you love and making a good living you can have both if you spend your time doing things you are not good at it will frustrate you and cause you to feel defeated and unsuccessful einstein became the most celebrated scientist in the world because of his insane focus on the general theory of relativity